match Ireland versus Serbia. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the collective side, anyway. Um, yeah. So you, you were at the game, one nil, collar off, fantastic finish. Um, so what? How was the how was the general buzz around the ground before the game? Like, where where was it optimistic? Generally, yeah. yeah. I think Irish fans, by their nature, are always kind of optimistic. They always kind of see the side of it that, oh well, if we sit back and we you know we defend well and we get a set piece and everything yeah. like that. And, they kind of they always look for a route to victory, whereas teams more countries I think can be more negative at times about their team. Like I remember talking to Austria fans before we played them, maybe, and they're telling us that we were going to win. Yeah, that they were just negative about it, whereas other fans don't seem to be really. Um, the atmosphere inside the ground was very, it was very subdued until. Really, Seamus Coleman came on the screen just before the start of the game. Yeah, yeah. And do, you reckon, do you reckon it was like maybe kind of apprehensive? Yeah, I think yeah. there was nerves in the air. I think it was quite obvious. And people were late filtering into the ground on Tuesday as well. Obviously, that kind of tends to happen a little bit more from the midweek game. It's getting the bias, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, people are working stuff as well. But yeah, it was a weird, it was a weird atmosphere before the game. Like, obviously, it was quite loud when the game kicked off. Um, being up in the press box and stuff like that, you kind of you realise how loud it is a little bit more because you're not in the middle of it. Yeah. Um, no, I was in the middle of it. Like, so I thought, like, this, before the game, it was a bit buzzy, people were a bit nervous, and like, you know, if you don't get a point here, you know, pretty much we're kind of looking at um, the final face. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of the general general consensus. Right? Yeah. But in terms of the fans, though, like, where, we're, where I was sitting, like, we're trying to go. Um, you know, amongst the fans, and the buzz was actually good. I thought it's like they were intimidating the Serbian players. Um, you could see they were they were making mistakes and everything, and all the Irish fans were howling that, and it just they just seemed a little bit intimidated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But first half, half, first half especially, yeah. like they did, they did come out of the traps early, pressing, not looking to let Serbia get a minute on the ball. So you definitely would get the crowd behind yeah. it anyway. So. Um, I suppose team selection, we're getting into a bit of team selection there. Uh, there was a few changes from the Georgia game. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah well, we, we called, like, of course, on Steve, but I wasn't against it. We called from all that's going to come in okay. ahead of Wheelan, but I, I think at every point, uh, at this point, every Irish fan wanted Wheelan out of the team just because of his legs. Not because they don't like him, just simply because he isn't the legs anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of. Holding the field there, and he's he's not he's kind of just stagnant. He's not really kind of providing that protection. Like, yeah, uh, um, I think Moyla coming in offered a lot more, a lot obviously a better engine. He's just so calm, though. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely. He's calm the ball, but he's also he works so hard defensively, especially down on right hand side yeah. where it's I'm sure we'll mention Cyrus Christie in a minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> where when Christie overextending himself going forward there was a couple of times where Moira absolutely up his bollocks to get all the way back yeah um, yeah. and make the tackle and defend that space which Glenn Whelan would try to do it's not as if he's Glenn Whelan's not a lazy player he, never no, has been. he always yeah, gives yeah. you everything of course he's getting on he, yeah he's getting on he doesn't speed he hasn't got a lot left to give no how old is he now 33 33 yeah. 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 he has served as well the only thing is a serve Great player. Don't when, is he, when has he ever pulled out of the squad or not? No, no, he's no, always there. He's there. He'll always, he'll always, he'll always be there. He's exactly yeah. like what Kilban was. Kilban, I thought, obviously not there. Uh, gave us what he gave us, you know, when he got left. Yeah, you he know, you know what he used to do. He used to the spells or anything all the time, and he was great at that. Um, but as far as, uh, as we did, obviously, he's, he's a defensive mid in comparison, so he's never really been at the the credit that he kind of deserves, you know what I mean? Oh, Same with most yeah. uh, defensive yeah, yeah. Are, you know, And do you feel players. kind of, do you feel with the changes, um, obviously, Moyler and for Whelan, Hulahan came in, we kind of, we did look a different team in the first half. Moyler did kind of, he, he sat, he did allow Hulahan to kind of come and show more for the ball. And Brady. And yeah. Brady kind of, yeah, opened the game up a lot more for us. And we were kind of playing better football that the fans have been screaming for. So I think um, the first thirty five minutes or so, more so than even the last time of the first half, 
Yeah. We were very impressed, and we were very impressed with midfield with kind of that tight diamond. But at some point in the game, between us tiring and not having the same amount of legs in midfield as we should, because at the end of the day, we're talking about me then being 33, but I still have a older than Yeah. And yeah, that's, that's he true. doesn't like to track back even because that's not his game. Mm. So suddenly, when Matic and Mila Vievich real, realise that, they will start to carry the ball more yeah. rather than pass it. And you were seeing that. You were seeing Matic carry the ball into midfield rather than trying to play it wide to the fullback. Yeah. And as soon as he did that, we started to get stretched and we started to pockets of space, started to open up for Tadic and Kostic to create problems. And Kostic created those untold problems down that left hand side. Mm-hmm. Like down, down the Serbian left, he was a constant, constant threat when he was on the pitch. Mm-hmm. They could have he created the chance for the Mitrovic where how Mitrovic didn't score that round off yeah. that well, now yeah. how Mitrovic doesn't score it, no idea. Um, but he's red hot at the moment, and yeah. he's got six goals, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's, he's red hot. Second and third top goal scorer. <laughs> <laughs> second and third top goal scorer in qualifying for any group. Yeah, I was just expecting a few a few well. Yeah, well, well, I was hoping he'd get sent off. I thought Clark was winding up being his club mate and everything like that. that he'd be you know, pulling out of him and kicking him. Well, you probably be afraid yeah. of what's going to happen to him. He's back to him training. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, Clark, geez, Clark could go through with for a short cut. But... Um, in retrospect, I mean, for, after the first half hour, it became frighteningly obvious that Maya was by himself in midfield. Yeah. And, and that Brady wasn't going to help him defensively. He's not a central midfielder. That's and the thing. And not going to help him because Hillman's not a central midfielder. He's a number 10. <coughs> that's you shouldn't have to track back. Well, yeah. why you, well, I don't see why Harry Arthur, if he was going to go for a football and type game, why Harry Arthur wasn't put in there. Obviously, the other night against Georgia wasn't his type of game. It was on ball. He was getting bypass the whole time in midfield. Um, with Hula hit in there and Arthur, I mean, took the Austria game away. They played, we won. But then again, it's like what Sam said about the like, Reds. We can't be relying on 34 year olds. We'll just. Everyone wants to think that he's a godsend or whatever. And I do value him as a player for us. He does bring us a lot, like a lot to our game. But at the same time, he, he doesn't get in for large as much as he used to. He is getting on, and we do need to start bringing in fresh blood. It's time, yeah. it's time for Liam Kelly to come in and take that spot. Time for that's a new young lad from Reading to come yeah. in and take that spot. He's playing every week in the championship. He's getting providing assist. He's the same type of player, but he's got a lot more pace. He's got a lot more legs. And at some point, he needs to experience in the first thing. We can't be bringing, we need to stop bringing in players at, like Horahan is now at 25 years old. That's, there's no point, because then the players... Yeah, they're trying to say, they're, like, kind of, they're young players, they're not young players. Yeah, they, they, but he said he's going to take the campaign to adjust to being in an Ireland set. Mm-hmm. And at that point, he's 26, 27. So you're getting one good campaign out of him before he starts to get into his 30s and start to move over the hill a bit. Yeah. We need to start Same thing bringing, more like, Yeah, we need to start bringing in twenty one these lads in their twenty one, twenty two. They need to stop going to the twenty ones, finishing out the twenty ones, and then us not seeing them in the international setup for two years and then coming in. Yeah. How many players do you see apart from a doubter really in the last kind of campaign to come through from the twenty ones straight to the first day? Not a lot. Not it's it's very few. Yeah, yeah. And that needs to change whether it's through management or whether yeah, it's through really, the structure it needs to change. Really. They're not saying that they don't have this experience. How do you get the experience? It's like going up to it's like going to a nightclub and a, 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 he's refusing at the door and he's like, No, you're not a local. It's like, Well, how do you become a local if you don't have seen? Yeah, no, mean? that's yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, do you think that that stems from kind of a manager's philosophy? Like I'd say only that kind of thinks these lads coming in, they should know what they're doing, rather than I have to I have to instruct these. I I need to bleed these into a system. Do you feel? Do you feel? Do you kind of think? Footballers, I'm sure they can work yeah. on the systems. They different yeah. managers coming in all the time. It's, it's, it's a different game now, though. Really, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you don't really kind of see that anymore. It's kind of these players have to. But they don't. You don't them. need a system. You've watched over the last twenty years. The football is the same. It's fucking long ball. <laughs> and hope, hope something can happen. Yeah. The tactics are outdated. This right. You know, if you have players there to, to, to get the ball down pass, and when we do do it. We do play against good teams. I mean, look at the Bosnia team. I was watching them last night. They lost against Cyprus, right? They had some better players than Serbia. Yeah. 
Yeah, so we get back to the game anyway, I suppose. Um, so Ireland towards towards yeah. the end of the second half, obviously the energy the energy was kind of depleting, and Serbia Serbia got tactically they started to bring on. They brought on striker defensively in the centre back. The striker definitely stretched us anyway. Yeah, like pretty much kind of kept Duffy and Clark guessing for the time where he was actually kind of up front. Obviously, towards the end of it, then Vukovic um, got injured. The other central defender and pretty much actually ended up going back to centre around the centre of defence. Um, so they ended up having a substitute and a striker. At centre half in the last ten minutes of the game, with a central defender up front, yeah, and we still couldn't break him down. Um, the man you good lads kept coming on was a positive for him because he's so big and strong. He's the same as Matic and Milivier, which is he's a very similar type of build of player, and um, they just kind of clogged up the midfield very well, and they had a lot of defenders, and they made it difficult for us to really break them down. Um, and the substitutes played a big part in that, in the fact that he brought on three big physical lads. Because yeah. he knew. He knew as soon as we can see that what do Ireland do when they're going to nil down. Exactly. Let's bring on Darren Murphy and let's start hoofing the ball up as far forward as we possibly can and hope to God Shane Long gets on the end of it. And uh, well, I suppose I should call about uh, Ireland's changes. What did you make of the sub? So we, we brought on, uh, obviously, we brought on Darren Murphy, uh, O'Dowda, and Hiraham. Uh, bizarre, to say the least. Um, I understand the Darren Murphy one. He wants to put someone up there with physical width, with um, long. But it's again, it's like I don't understand the whole the long ball with the shame long. I don't understand no, it was John Walters. No pun intended, exactly. Yeah. But like, why keep lumping the ball? I know long gets up well, but, but, but there's nothing in behind. He's the one with the pace. Someone should be knocking the ball so he can get in behind. Yeah. And it's it's bizarre that he plays Walters on a, as a wide right. I've never I've never ever I've never understood Walters on the right to be honest. Well he did he did it for Stoke as well, but, but he's a lot better down the middle. Look at him against Austrian. He's a bullied, yeah. you know I mean? the Austrian defence. Bullied yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, remember when we were uh, we just watching every time he's pulling them, they're yeah. falling all over. They didn't know what to do. And we seen all that we obviously we seen um, from the changes and um, we had we had we did start to get a lot of the ball. It was kind of pot shots and stuff. At, at the same time, like Murphy came on, I thought Murphy actually did very well when he came on. Obviously, he got yeah. a red card from Maximovic and stuff like that. He got him behind him a couple of times as well. Um, I think Darren Murphy's actually a very good striker, especially at international level. He might not score you a lot of goals, but he creates mayhem up there. He's very strong in the air. And for the way we play, he's perfect. If we play football, he probably struggles, but when we're not playing football, when we're trying to put a lot of cross into the box, he's our best striker without them. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Colin O'Dowda, apart from the fact he put that cross into the box, which was a good cross, I don't understand why he's in the squad. He's not playing regularly for Bristol City. Bringing lads who are playing regularly for their clubs. Yeah. Um, like, as I already mentioned, with him, bring, bring Kelly in from Reading. Mm -hmm. uh, let him be in the first two spots. Adele was playing a similar role to him in terms of his squad. He's a squad death player. Yeah. Um, he only came on the other night to the game he was injured. That's the only reason I would have personally maybe brought on Horgan just for the type of player he is. He's, got, he's a little bit more direct than Adele. And he got all the players he had around the team. Well, it was kind of, it was kind of strange well. in a way that you know, a guy who doesn't play regularly for his club becomes one of to go to guys for our type of threat. Yeah. The, everything would seem to be going through them. Like. Well, the biggest, my biggest problem when they dropped defensive and we had lots of ball, James McLean was back to half. 
He was picking the ball up from Gal. He was picking the ball up from Randall. Yeah, yeah but that's that's the problem. But well, that's not McLean. That's not his game. He shouldn't be running from deep and trying to find passes. Yeah. That's he's either going to get crosses into the box or beat a man out wide or put him in the box because he couldn't yet. Yeah, it seems to be a trait of on the other side of the natural position for some reason. I think Brady is over there. Yeah, I'm saying I can't play it. But I just think Brady is too smart for our players. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, they're like, what I'm saying is, you look at players who give incredible balls all the time. He does put, he can see the balls he's trying to do, but the other players around him don't realise it. And that's you're looking at it, you're like, God, like, you can see why he's being played number 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 ten, number. but he doesn't have anyone with, with football brain in front of him. And that's why I think when him and Hulham play together, they do very well. Yeah. Um, you look at him linking up with Cyrus Christie for a good few one twos in the first half, and they were getting him behind. Like, he does play intelligent balls a lot of the time. My problem being is that he's got no one coming around. You look at me in that burn, like, look at that pass for Chris Wood against Spurs there uh, before the break there. They look at that for a pass. We had one just before. Like, was it Vokes? Yeah. Like, again, again, another one like our players just don't have a brain to put the ball in the, in, the, in the net or get in behind. He knows he'll put the ball to you where you need it, Brady Bill. Yeah. And when he went left back, he was probably our best player. But the problem is, if you had someone who was solid, I don't know what happened with Warby, you got injured, but um, they had someone solid left back to let Brady play on the wing and let McLean play his. Job on the wing. Well, I think, and then play it too, maybe up top. I think the problem. I think the problem is we we're seeing too often now James McLean playing on the right hand side and a lot of Brady playing towards the left. Brady plays on the right for Burnley and McLean plays on the left for West Brom. So why are they playing? Why are they playing the other side of Brown? James McLean is now right foot. Probably the first person telling you that he's not right foot. You seen him when he tried to take a shot with it on Tuesday. He, he didn't have one. Yeah. Right, yeah. So yeah. He's, he's not playing wrong. He's oh, not just going to come in on his left foot. He's not, yeah, not going to cut in, take on, a, yeah, take on a full back and put it in the bottom corner. Yeah, leave the clean on the left or put him up, or put him up front. Sure. And leave Brady on the right where he can cut in and put those crosses. He loves to put those crosses yeah. in where he can actually whip it across the goalkeeper rather than whip it away from the goalkeeper yeah. on the left. His better crosses are always going when he's whipping it towards the keeper yeah. because he's got the trajectory on it's the ball nice. to beat the goalkeeper in the air to fill him with it. And we miss that when you're just playing in the middle or you're playing up the left. Yeah, I agree. Um, so what, what, what I thought was to you now, lads, um, how, yeah, what I thought was to you, lads, uh, how, how does the team change? Like, does it have to be kind of more trust from the manager? Does it have to be a philosophy change? Or is Martin O'Neill, is it the end of Martin O'Neill? Do we need someone fresh, new set of ideas? I, uh... I'm, I'm on the fence here now. The other night I was, I was, I was pretty pissed off. Yeah, yeah. So I did. It was emotional. It was emotional. It was passionate too, though. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not like... It's, like it's, yeah. it's, it's, well, just coming out of the game, you can understand. Like, it's frustrating. Yeah. I listened to him, not very convincing in his press conference at the same time. It was just like, oh, like this, sound, this it sounds like the end. And he just looked defeated. It sounded defeated. He did. He, yeah. did, he did put a frustrated figure. Like, obviously, he had his little tiff with uh, Tommy O'Donoghue after the Georgia game. Um, he has that Italian, he? Yeah, he does. He has it all the time. You just don't say it. Sometimes it just doesn't make camera all the time. But then, um, Steve, so you were you were in the press conference and like what, what like you obviously got your your question with answered by Mark O'Neill. But then, um, yeah, do you feel you kind of? But you can check out on the YouTube channel. There you go. Uh, do you feel he's kind of? It seemed it seemed to me just watching the video. He seemed a bit mentally checked out um, or fed up. I any call it what you want. I he's defensive. I think he re- I think he realizes himself that he's brought this team as far as he's going to bring, and that he's got all he can get out of this group of players, and that he's not prepared personally to go into a qualifying campaign and make wholesale changes and trust young players and stuff like that because it's a no benefit to him because he's not going to be there if he's there for the next campaign. He's definitely not going to be there for the one after that. So. He's not going to have any interest in bringing lads through and bringing in a younger side. Like you look at, you look at what Wales are dealing with lads like Ben Woodburn and stuff like that, or Scotland are even dealing with Ollie Burke, who obviously didn't work out from that well in Leipzig last year. He got some game times in the team who are in the Champions League now. He's at West Brom where he'll play games for them. Them lads are in the squad and they're integral parts of the squad. It's trusting your squad and yeah. it's trusting the process. But the way I see it is. He's without his, in my opinion, it's two best players. 
And I'm not, you might think that's why I've been never the fan. Because you know, without James McCarthy, and he is without James Collin, and without your best senior players in there, it is hard to bring in young players to have around that. So I can kind of see it from that sense, looking back after the other night, and kind of the fresh mentality and watching the game back. James Collin brings a lot to our team. He's our best player, everybody knows that. Uh, James McCarthy starts every big game for Ireland. When he's fit. Do you, do you not feel that James McCarthy, like obviously he does the business for Everton, but he, there's times for Ireland he's an absolute passenger. James McCarthy has had That's the way we play. James McCarthy. I think that takes him out of it, yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. when him and Arthur, uh, ideal midfield, sorry to say, uh, Arthur McCarthy, maybe. Maybe who were here. So, so that comes, yeah. so that that will come back to the manager then. So obviously, Arthur came out and said he's in a different style of football. So he kind of yeah, he's trying he's to adjust. Coming, he's coming from a footballing team, yeah. and now he's playing in this. So he's trying. He has to adjust to that. So you were saying obviously our tactics would take a player like McCarthy and, and Arthur. Yeah, yeah. So but at the same time, I would like to see Moira in there yeah. too. Yeah, because it's a good sense. Um, I think. You look at when James McCarthy has had good games for Ireland, and they've constantly been when he's been the anchor in midfield, mm-hmm. without Glenn Whelan and never saw him. Yeah. When he can be the anchor in midfield, he can be the deepest midfield, he can basically play nearly as the third centre with Ben and McCarthy because have the equal times. That's when he's most effective, and that's when he has great games for Ireland, and you see how good football he is. And Glenn Whelan is on the way out now. So McCarthy needs to get himself fit. And if, in my opinion, needs to get himself out of everything, because I don't think he's going to be a first game player with Steinle and Gay there. Yes, he might play some big games and stuff like that. He would if he could still be a rotational player, but I don't know if Kilman fancies him because of the injury record, and I think he'd be better suited going somewhere else where they play football and everything like that, similar in the former. Yeah. yeah, even a form that there's something like that to revive the career and just start playing games every week. Well, that's what he needs to do, because if he plays games every week, gets himself back in the Ireland squad. He's he is our best central midfielder. Well, as guys, we we have we have kind of said what we could say on the game anyway. So, are we optimistic for the remaining two games, or is it, are we out? I'm probably going to get out of for this, but I don't think we're going to be more valuable at the moment. Really? Um, I don't think we'll be more valuable without Brady and Glenn. Um, I think they're too important to the way O'Neill plays football. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say they're necessarily important, but well, that were a tricky outside, and I think, yeah, look, we might pick up a one 0 win or something like that because they don't really score goals. But I think it's be a really difficult game, even at the Aviva, because I think the atmosphere will be tense because everyone knows you need to win. Yeah. And yeah. certainly, Moldova did what they did to Wales, or even did what they did to us in Chisinau, where they kept it tight and kept it really difficult yeah. for us, Chisinau. <laughs> For 70 odd minutes, the crowd is going to start to get on top of Ireland. The crowd is going to start 30, to 30, kind of, 30 minutes goes and it's still nil all. You could hear the whistle start to fall. Yeah, if you get into the second half and stuff like that, especially, it's going to become difficult. Yes, I see it's picking up a win possibly against well, some play. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's 100% sure. nailed on win, and there's no way we're going to crowd for being that well. So. If you want sure. positivity, get on to stay. I think I think we'll beat Maldow. Um, I don't think it's going to be easy, I don't think it's going to be pretty, but I think it'll be. And then, I don't know, maybe, maybe gain some confidence from that we'll have. The clean and Brady come back in. And then look at it, you mean, where is that much greater than us? Do you know what I mean? And at that point, there's a belief in that Wales team that there isn't in the Ireland Yeah, they've, they've been on, they have been on. But you take, you take Ben Ramsey out there, Tim. Yeah, you can tell you that, yeah. So, like, we're we've still got Joe Allen, Ashley Williams, kind of players like that, who are real quality players. So, Ashley Williams, he's John O'Shea. Look at him, yeah, and he gets yeah. Ashley Williams, are you? Yeah, yeah right to be sure. Really. He's bad, but he's bad playing the back of Duffy currently. Yeah. Doesn't matter, uh, <laughs> they're going to grow. Ben Davies sure. is there as well. That's That's they've got some good players, I think. I think they've got a better spot than we do. But it's not that much better. So, yeah, I suppose I'll have to give me my own. Assessment. Um, yes, Phil. How do you it's very, yeah. yes, you know, positivity from an Arsenal fan. Uh, you need to be positive about it. Well, that's not yeah, 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 I, need to be posi- I need to be positive about something. Do you know what I mean? Last night's got an assist last night. Last night's got an assist. It was three two. Has to be two of the first. Yeah. The Arsenal right picked the draw last night. You're positive. Um, see, 
we've kind of we keep kind of seen from groups past and games past when it is put up to us, it's literally it's like a kick in the arse. So it does bring it out of us, like we do kind of rise to the occasion. Uh, but the only thing I think we've kind of we kind of bit off more than we can chew this time. I think if that was going to happen, that would have come on Tuesday. Just here, yeah. yeah, because the backs are against the wall after the draw to Georgia. Okay. Sure. And it just didn't go in performance. I, I have a feeling we will beat Moldova with we'll scrape. We'll scrape. For the first half of an hour, is. Yeah, I have a feeling we'll scrape Moldova, but we probably will either draw or lose in Cardiff. Um, sorry for that. But I just think we're going to have to go to Cardiff and try and beat Wales. And, yeah, just, and that's playing into Welsh hands. Yeah. That's, they love that. They love when the team comes and plays yeah. against them. Because it means they can catch up on the break and like to bail and like to have a rock to carry and stuff like that. They are very quick players and they attack, they attack very well and very quickly and bails at his best when he's playing against you on the break. And we're going to have to go for it at some point to carry it. And yes, yeah, that look- suits us because every time we go for it in the game, we actually look a better side. But it also plays into their hands as well. That's yeah. what we're It looks like it is, what happened with Scotland. And us, the last campaign was just switched over. And we are in Scot- uh, Wales, are the Ireland, and we are in Scotland. Yeah. Nice one, Wales got to Georgia, and it was like Scotland. But then this all changes. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose uh, I suppose end up that, lads. Yeah, let anyway. <laughs> Well, it's good news in the Yeah, that's true. Anyway, um, that's been our Ireland Serbia recap for our Irish Football Fan TV. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks very much. Don't forget to subscribe.